little hesitant, but it was so beautiful that you could work it over a period of time. And organization, that shows the agility of the company, right? We, a lot of people will crib. And trust me, managers were cribbing. VP level, oh, what the hell, my new organization structure, okay? Chalo kar lete. Wo bhi kar lete, dekh lete kya hota hai. Then we came with this, something called as a new plan to achieve 2015 targets, okay? That we will double the revenue from 1 billion to 2 billion, right? In a span of three years. That's a huge thing, huge task. Uh, of course, I was part of the merger and acquisition team, so from the HR side, that, that's a different role that I played, right? So, when you talk about it, be ready for change, and you should also be ready for ambiguity. In merger and acquisition experience that I learned is, you should be able to, you know, live with something which is not clear. Lot of gray areas, everybody likes white and black, right? Everybody wants it very clearly defined roles, but there are times in life, that even at senior level, you don't know what role you take. All right? There's no clear cut job description for you. But you have to go and achieve the end result, which the organization is looking at. That talks about ambiguity. And you have to let go of your fear that will I have a job next? I had to take a risk where I saw that where I had to take a sabbatical from the company. All right? And when I went back, you know, my boss said, Can you take this job? I said, Yes, I'll do. But I've not done this in the past, I said. Doesn't matter, can you take it? I said, yes. Brace up yourself, go back, and then you get back to the job, right? So, ambiguity and self-manage. You have to manage yourself. Whatever said and done, you'll have a nice mentor. You'll have a coach. You may have a coach within the organization, outside the organization. But you have to manage yourself. Nobody is going to tell you, and nobody is going to protect your back. Trust me, not in the corporate world, okay? Take my real two cents input, all right? Nobody is going to back, watch your back. You have to watch your own back, right? Ensure that you take care of your, the decision you have taken, leave it up to it, right? And ensure that whatever decision you have taken, you leave up and ensure that nobody else gets impacted by it negatively, okay? Second, upskill regularly remain relevant to the business, okay? Anyway, I think I've spoken much about it. I'm not going to talk a bit more. Less frequent promotions within organizations, flat structures. So don't expect promotions every year. You are promoted here every year, right, in this college? <laughs> yeah, from first year, go to second year, right? So the promotion in a way, right? So you are used to that. From fifth standard, sixth standard, sixth to seventh, seventh year, every year it keeps changing. You know, that's going to come to a halt once you graduate from here, right? You don't get promoted every year. I know everybody loves to get promoted, but that's not how it is. You know, to ensure that you get to understand that nobody is going to be moving you up very often, right? So, be real it, flat organized structures are going to remain there, and they're going to remain for the next couple of years more relevant, okay? So, be ready for it. Able to mentally map people, network, who connects with whom. There's another interesting thing. You as a HR guy, it's not enough that you know the rule book. Watch people. And I, I, I love, I love doing it. I'm a marketing specialist guy. I'm a marketing guy, okay? This is another information I'm giving you. <laughs> I'm not an HR guy at all. I'm not a fundamental HR guy. I'm a marketing guy. I specialize in marketing, right? I know Gayatri knows it. So I'm a marketing guy. I used to teach marketing, right? And also, HR, the reason I chose HR was people are the one who's actually, I won't, can't use a word here, right? So, uh, the public audience, right? But people are the ones who are actually make or break the decision of strategy, right? So, when I, so I used to do a lot of market research earlier, right? I worked independent consultant. I worked a lot of market research. I did a lot of studies in market research. And that's when I decided when I, when I should go and train people, right, about the studies that I have to do and go and implement in the field, people are the ones who are actually doing it for. You have a beautiful strategy, a lot of inputs, a lot of activities to be done, actioned out, and then you say, guys, go back and do it. Sales are not picking up, right? Then you realize what's happening. Market is vibrant. Everything is going. It's somewhere down the line, people are the ones who are causing all this difficulty. So that's when I shifted and decided to move from marketing to HR. I said, let me get the right place, and people are the ones who are going to make a difference. So from marketing to HR, I made a transition where I thought, spoke about people's capability, and that's where it is. Get to know your marketing. And, and interestingly, my marketing uh, experience helped in the successful HR guy. Why? Because in marketing, when you talk about it, you get to know a lot of market insights. When you interact with a lot of people, market research, you talk to people, get insight, right? 
when you talk to people, when you look into the various brands, when you look into the various consumer behavior, right, you are actually having a mental map of certain things. And I apply the same in my corporate world. When I interact with a lot of my engineers, I know where these guys come from. What is the kind of aspirations that they have? And I just match their aspirations. That's it. And trust me, marketing is what I do in internal organization. In HR, I don't do anything much. I only do a lot of internal marketing. What do I do internal marketing? What does four P's talk about? The four P's, the very old Philip Kotler. Price, product, place, promotion, and of course, five P is people, right? So people is what are my businesses now. So when I talk about price, am I giving the right? Am I paying the right, uh, right to pay for that guy? When I make an offer, am I paying the right price for that guy? Value that is bringing on board? Do I see a product value? Yes. Do I see a service value in it? Yes. Second, second P. Sorry? Product. What do I mean by product? My HR offering. Do I have the right product to go and sell it to that person? Am I making it attractive? Am I making any product that I have from HR side? Can I sell it to that guy or no? IDA model. Do you remember IDA model? Attention, interest, desire, action of marketing advertising. Okay, all right. Yeah, you, I'm sure you know it. Right? So it's called IDA model, AIDA. That's where you apply in your HR field, right? Attention, you get the attention of a person, generate interest in the person, create the desire in, and ensure that he acts on that desire. That's your whole advertising cycle is, right? And that's what you use internally within my HR forum. So I'm successful in the management field because I apply those learning that I had in marketing, all right? Can easily be applied. Can I pick up my rules and regulations? Yes, I can go and keep my read, update myself on rules and regulations much faster. But can I apply my OB knowledge there? Yes. I apply my OB on a day-to-day -day basis, trust me. Every day I interact, I apply my OB. I look at who is connected with whom. How do I know my work done from whom? If I have to get my budget approved, whom do I have to talk to? I'm not going behind him. I understand who is the person who is influencer in that. You all of you know about influencing strategies, right? I use this very often every day. Okay? Be very flexible in terms of work, scalability, up or down. Are you ready to go for a demotion? We are not ready, right? Trust me, you should be ready. Trust me. I have done it myself. Okay? I have gone myself. That's how the world works. I met a guy yesterday who was uh, Sean. Uh, Sean is a guy, right? Very high pot in my company, all right? But I couldn't, unfortunately, we couldn't place him because his, his style of working is very different from the rest of the guys. Now, he got an offer from, he just told me yesterday, uh, yeah, day of yesterday, Friday, I had a meeting with him. So uh, he told me that he's joining United Airlines. I said, fantastic. He's going back to Chicago uh, and got a job in US. Uh, and he said, it's a degrade for me, he said. But I'm getting the same pay what I'm getting in Rolls Royce, but I'm degrading myself. Uh, it's more of a demotion, he said. I said, why did you take it? He said, yeah, that's what was very attractive for me. End of the day, the job attracted me a lot, right? But I was not getting something else, so I took it. I only, my only condition to them is maintain the same pay that I'm getting right now. That's enough, no increase. Guys, high potential, amazing, he's just 28 years old. He was my VP here for my defense business. He's going and joining a civil aerospace in US airlines. Customer is who? Rolls Royce. That's how you need to play. Is it a good way of selling my business in the future? Yes. He struck a deal, right? He got himself downgraded, but can he go and actually get orders for me in the future? Yes. That's another strategy you have to play. You have to convince it, right? And then he said, yeah, this is a strategy that I have. I had a discussion with my boss, and boss said, why don't you look at this? Please understand, you be ready for. Many of you are not used to it. We are not used to it. Trust me, not, most of us are not used to it. But that actually takes you up. Do you know the bow and arrow? I always give an example of bow and arrow. Bow and arrow, I know it's very, very crude. But if you have to, if you want your arrow to go further, what should you do? Pull it back as much as possible, right? You have to strain. 
Only when that's a full strain, your arrow will hit your mark faster than what you expect. That's exactly is the way you have to learn. You should be ready to go down, to go up. And I've done umpteen examples I can give you, apart from me, where I've seen people taking downgrade to go up much faster. Okay? And then also be flexible with people to work constructively. Being constructive work is very important rather than being only giving negative feedback. Right? And from the HR skills perspective, and this is something which I'll thought it's more theoretical for you, but I think it's important for you to know. Technical skills which are important for you guys, business acumen, first number one priority for me. Okay, get yourself, acquire more more knowledge of the business that you like to be interested in, right? Technology applications, give umpteen example. Business tools, how many of you done lean management here? Have you heard of lean management? Lean. L-E-A-N. No? If not, my suggestion is please do take yourself updated about the management techniques. This is a very, very low. Toyota is known for this. Toyota production system is nothing but lean management in practice. Right? So please go and study a little bit of this because it's going to help you guys. Trust me. Right? If you know the lean processes, lean management thought process, your life can be much easier. You can apply it in your day-to-day -day life as well. Right? Oh, sorry, quantitative techniques. How many of you are good at statistics? How many of you are good at statistics? Great. You have a good skill. You don't have to be an expert in quantitative. Let me tell you, I'm not a great quantitative technique guy, okay? Trust me, I'm sorry. Trust me. I, I, you put me in shame of, <laughs> if I were to put quantitative techniques because I know Rashmi very well in the QA. <laughs> All right? So, when it comes to QA, but you should know the application of it. That's very important. Where do I apply my mean median mode or regression analysis, right, when it comes for people? Can I do an analysis and see, can I look at where it gets impacted, right? Any decision that I take here, all of us knows about CPM PERT in operations research, right? It's nothing but application of statistics in the tool of management decision, right? Even though operation research was not very close to me, but it's in practice we use this, right? So please get to understand that. Understand financial understanding, I'm going to skip it. Functional, as I told you, get to know about labor laws, get to know about OB psychology, very, very clear. If you have your fundamentals, nobody can kill you in the future. Nobody can actually pull you down. Get to know those things very well. Get to know the HR capital process, which is H2E. What is H2E? Hire to exit, right? Get to know the general cycle that happens. Get to know thoroughly. Compliance, governance, ethics. This is Big, big thing now, okay? The big thing which if you are an ethical guy, trust me, companies are ready to pay you the price that you ask for. When you stand up for your own values and stand up, and that's how I got picked up Rolls Royce, you have to do the same, right? Not many people get this opportunity, right? I'm lucky, trust me, I'm lucky because probably down the line, I think uh, whatever has been taught to me by my parents, my mentors, and my colleagues, the people, the company that you keep makes a huge difference, all right? So it's a big, big thing in terms of governance and ethics. Reward strategy. Get to know a reward strategy very clear because I told you each millennials will have a different thought process. So get to know that. Talent management and competency building or development strategy. Keep that in mind. These are all techniques that I'm teaching, but from the functional side. And of course, the last one is about leadership. I'm not talking behavioral, but I'm talking about leadership, all right? Anybody can be a leader. You don't have to be only a, once you cross 15 years of work experience, you become a leader. No. You can be a leader at any given point of time. Starting today, starting now, you can lead. What does leadership mean? It talks about emotional intelligence. All of you know what is EI is? Yeah? You're familiar with EI? Get to see the connections, right? I told of the people. Communication, your ability to communicate. All right? Presentation skills, I think all of you are getting that. That's very good. Coaching and mentoring. Organizing skills, I think organizing event like this, having your ability to organize this events is very important for you to have. Conflict consequence management. What is conflict management? You'll always have people having diverse views. You should be as an HR, be neutral and accept both of it. You can't be 
bias. Because if you have to be successful guys, this is very important for you. You will have a lot of conflicts in front of you. What stand you take will always determine and people come to you for that. All right? It may be a tough call, but you have to take that call. Right? Consequence management is nothing but it is not always rosy, 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 rosy for everybody. Some peer, sometimes if people do not perform, take a tough call. I have been having tough conversations with people and I train my managers to have how to have consequence management discussions with them. It is not an easy thing. That is my job now. As a manager, as a leader right now in the role, I tell my managers how to manage consequences. If you say consequence can be both, if it is positive or negative, constructive or not, right? If a person is not performing, I spend most of my time training them here because they do not like difficult conversation. How many of you like to have difficult conversation with the people? Not many. You like to avoid difficult conversations, but that is the thing which is happening. You as an HR guy have to have that capability to stand up and have a difficult conversation, okay? And when it is not going to be easy, it talks about the values that you have, it talks about the, whether the trust that person has on you, right? And then of course, empathy. But all said and done, have common sense, okay? All said and done, have a common sense and be pragmatic. Nothing can beat common sense, okay? Nothing can beat common sense. I know you would have wanted me to tell, put something else there. I told you what you wanted, theoretically, but this actually in practice, okay? Whatever I spoke is all common sense. Did I tell anything which is not there, which is in common knowledge or public knowledge? It is all about putting it in the right perspective, right? So, if somebody asks me a question, what is a competency question? You see two people, right? Both are pilots, right? I know because I come from airline, so I am picking that example, right? Both are pilots. There are 29,000 civil aircrafts. The back 90,000 civil pilots. This has the latest data. There will be huge shortage of pilots in the future. Huh? Those who are interested, please, if you want to have engineering background done PUC plus two, please think of it. Huge shortage, I am just telling you in advance, right? So, we got roughly 11,500 defense aircrafts, okay? Do you know how many number of pilots are there? We do not have no idea. Why? Because this data cannot be gathered, all right? Because nobody wants to say, tell how many defense pilots are there for each country. This data I could find out by doing a lot of research, I could find out how many aircrafts are there. And that too, interesting, out of 133 countries, Interestingly, only 82 countries have got fighter aircrafts. Lot of other 50 countries don't have a fighter aircraft or even zero. They all mention that as zero. I don't know. So they all showed as zero, 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 zero. I said, okay. So this is the data. What am I talking about? Do you think the competencies are the same? Are the competencies same? No? Let's look at these three pilots. Okay? It's the differentiating is gut feeling and muscle memory. Have you heard of this? I don't know how many of you. It's a gut feeling of the fighter pilot which makes a decision and the muscle memory that has been trained over a period of time at that moment, it's a split second decision that you have to make. Do you know that when a, fight, when a fighter aircraft which goes at 2 Mach, right? if it has to take a turn, what should be the span or radius? I know, it's, but the span of radius that that person has to take at 2 Mach, the aircraft can't take a switch break and then turn like that, right? It sounds very nice when you see the movies. The reality is not that, right? It's a split second decision. If he loses that split second when he forgets to press a button for releasing the bomb, right? Bomb can go close to around 200 kilometers aside. That's the decision that he has to make. Any time when he presses, by mystically, when he's going at that speed, right, misses pressing by split second, the bomb can reach 200 kilometers away from the target that is there. That's the reality. So it's muscle memory which actually tells him. So you as HR people learn over a period of time and build that guts in you, right? So my last piece of advice for you guys is work on your strengths only, okay? 
know your weakness, let it die on its own. Okay? Know it, but don't work on it. It will die on its own. Because you are so focused on your strengths that your negativity just gets died out. Okay? That's a simple basic fundam that I'm, I talk about. Right? Be in the right company, not working with a company of choice to go and join. Right? I know, I'm working for a dream company that I wanted to work for. Right? That's the right company. That's fine. Be the right company of people whom you are, right? Station house left to you, okay? It's your call, right? So, learn to manage with ambiguity, right? Conscious keeper and a custodian of values, all right? Please ensure that you never compromise on that. And then, of course, last one is have patience. A lot of it, okay? So, thanks for your time. Wonderful. <laughs> Pleasure. Thank you, sir, for enlightening and empowering words on how to adapt to changes and learn about our weakness. After such a knowledgeable session, the forum is now open for questions. So I will just take two questions. Two.